Let's explore how the best practice app could be used in a real clinical scenario. The patient is a 44-year-old female with abdominal pain and shortness of breath, dyspnea. This patient has two important symptoms. First, I explore the shortness of breath symptom. To do that, I can either search or browse. This patient is clearly quite ill, so I look immediately at urgent considerations to establish what to do first. In the urgent considerations, the first diagnosis mentioned is acute myocardial infarction. I notice from this that women with acute coronary syndrome can occasionally present atypically, so I want to explore this option. I find out the differentiating symptoms and signs of acute coronary syndrome by browsing the differential diagnosis section. Here I can see what important features in the history, examination and investigation are relevant to the condition. Again, I can see from the history that acute coronary syndrome can present atypically in women. The next stage is to establish whether this patient does in fact have acute coronary syndrome. The first tests recommended are an ECG and cardiac enzymes, which I request. The detail given for each test helps me interpret the results and make the diagnosis. In this case, the cardiac enzymes are elevated above normal values and the ECG shows ST segment depression and T wave inversion in the lateral leads. Based on these results, I suspect that the most likely diagnosis is that of a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, so I can now navigate to the detailed information on non-STEMI. The overview shows clearly what other investigations I should undertake and the various treatment options. I can then drill down to review more detailed information that will support my ongoing decisions around this patient's care. If you want to see how the Best Practice app can support you in a real clinical scenario, search for BMJ Best Practice in the App Store now.